Credo is the daft of the Football Daft podcast. Is that a good story? Is that a good story? I've got an encyclopedia brain. He's got a damn man nothing. <laughs> Fuck shit. What are you a fucking who? <laughs> this is Football Daft. Sponsored by Glasgow Private Hire. Make booking easier. Download our booking app now on App Store and Google Play. You're a Rangers man. Uh, I'm a Hearts man. <laughs> With Ewan Cameron. I work for Showtime and ESPN. <laughs> and... Hey, the top end of Stevenson. Hello and welcome to the Football Dad Podcast with Ewan and Grado, episode 11. Last week, we got a lot of feedback on the show with Jose Katongo, the former Hearts and Hamilton player. We loved Jose. I know that you listening loved Jose Katongo. So many of you asked us to bring him back on the oh, show. Aye. Do you think we should bring him back? 100%, definitely. The funniest guest we've had. I enjoyed myself thoroughly. Well, better than anyone else we've had? Oh. Like, well. Commons, Hately... Who else have we had in here? Davy Clarkson. Ah, oh, they were all right. They were, they were all right. <laughs> all right. Not Jose Katongo though. Jose was an absolute cracking guest. Get him back on as soon as possible. And um, listen, it's a football daft podcast, and I've noticed you brought today uh, a football jersey that sat behind you on a coat hanger. I've no idea. It's Fort so William. So Fort William FC. When we tell you story, you right. So I've decided I want to start wearing football teams, random football team shirts on this podcast. Why are you not wearing it? Because it's a medium. <laughs> And I haven't been a medium since <laughs> primary five. <laughs> uh, right, so, so somebody uh, sends you that. Well, no, just anybody. Um, I don't know if you've known in the news. Fort William went, I think, 842 days without a win. Wow. Uh, a miserable, miserable record. That must be some sort of record, that. I think it was a record, I. Uh, it's been described as the worst football team in the UK. <laughs> 73 games without a win. Last week, they beat Nairn County 5-2. So they go from not winning a game for 80-odd games... Aye, and then pump Nairn County. 5-2. So I, I DM'd uh, the, the, the Fort William account the next day, and I says, look, I don't want to be cheeky, but I, I want to start wearing random teams to, to wear on the podcast, whatever. And they were buzzing. And uh, the next day, I got sent an official match-worn, match-worn historic game... Um, when I remember the way Scott Hunter Scott Hunter fantastic player he's a fantastic player he's in a team that only won for 700 plus days hey, hey, but listen he's come on to a game <laughs> <laughs> so, so Scott sends you that so jersey I, there's the Fort William official because I'm thinking they maybe have a so they have shirts to sell, to sell up there, uh, but no. I've got it right here. I think he's got fucking Ribena down the frontier <laughs> or Cola. Um, he's, there's a whiff of fucking something under the end pits. So you can't get any more authentic than that. Uh, so he so, didn't even wash the bloody jersey no, before he sent no, it to you. No, and <laughs> they want it back. <laughs> He doesn't want it back. He wants it back. So he sent it to you to wear. If I could have sent the recorded delivery, uh, oh, you won, blah, blah, blah. It probably won't fit. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> uh, <coughs> they wouldn't let uh, So once you're done, uh, can you send it back to blah, 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 blah. So, and uh, Scott, you did send it to me, special delivery. Uh, I was sent it fucking second class, mate. I'm not... <laughs> Are you um, going to wash it before you yeah, send it back no, to him? No, 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 because if there is the plans for the Fort William Football Museum, then it's better <laughs> to keep it just the, nice the way it is the new. Covered in Ribena. Covered in Ribena. And smelling wh- in B.O. As I. <laughs> um, and it is, uh, I thank you, big man. Thanks for that. And if there's any other teams that want to send in taps, remember, I'm an XL. Mate, there's no football team out there that's got a player that wears an XL top. Goalie. No, nah, they could be assistant manager Billy Brown, who's going to be on the episode. He's not. He'll not be a fucking medium Billy. <laughs> <laughs> he can, you know, if he wants to say that. He's not a player, aye, but he wears the trackies. So what you have to? You have to have a football jersey or a fucking tracksuit. I'm, I'm after eating any free clubber. <laughs> so you're using the football daft podcast but to get want, yourself some free strips. But look, look, right, look. We're obviously going to have to take this one down, right? But this would have been the start. Of it. This place is going to look gallus once it's all set up. All the different teams and such like. Right, so you've got the, you've got the Fort William football strip behind you that you're mm-hmm. going to have to send back. So if you want to send in a strip, I'm going to wear it, then you then we'll display it in this wee studio. Send it to at Gradle Wrestling or at Football Daft Pod on Twitter. Get them sent in. 
So that'll be a few tents that'll be coming in here then, will it? You cheeky, cheeky bastard. <laughs> and by the way, stop DMing my missus on Facebook. Did aye, she's telling me. And do you want to know? <laughs> Look at Did you. Did she tell you about aye. that? Aye. She goes, what did I say? He keeps waving at me. I go, <laughs> I goes, I goes, well, do you know what I'm going to do? I goes, well, I'm going to go on his missus and I'm going to fucking wave at her. Do you know what I noticed when I went on your wife's Facebook? Uh-huh. We've got... I've got one mutual friend with her. And who is it? Paul Harper. It's no you. <laughs> you get, you're in Mrs. Cannibas with you on Facebook. <laughs> I can't believe your girlfriend told you that I'm DMing her. Uh, duh. Why would she tell you that? Why would she tell you that? Were you sat next to her in the bed when I was messaging she her? She just went, that couldn't you and Karma keeps messaging me? What I say <laughs> back? And I just tell me, fuck off. <laughs> Great old rant. Right, Grado, what's on your mind this week? Well, I'm kind of ranting at myself, hopefully, and hopefully at credit <laughs> companies. Card companies, credit companies right, okay. I, I'm having to apply for a, a mortgage, right? Uh-huh. And I bought a fucking razor, a razor in Argos, and Irvin a year and a half ago, right? And I don't know why I done it. Wait, 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 hold on a minute. <laughs> right, so you, again, you're, you're, you've just gone off on a wee tangent here, right? Aye. You're telling me you're trying to sort a mortgage for the house, mm-hmm. right? And then you go to Argos and you buy a razor. What's the connection? Because I made a cunt to it, right? What would you mean? Well, listen. So I bought a, a razor and it was something else I bought. I can't remember where it was. Something From Argos? That, aye. It was a razor and something else. Were you in the store when you aye, bought I it? Aye, I was in the store when I bought it. I can't remember. What was the other Did thing Did you get on credit? I <laughs> buy now, pay nine months later. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. All right, man. So how much do I need to pay a day? Nothing, sir. All right, tidy. Right? Right? <laughs> And that just... And you forgot about it? Forgot all about oh, it. Oh, no. Forgot all about it. Right? I missed the first payment nine months later of £18.50. <laughs> I can't get a fucking mortgage! Because <laughs> <laughs> oh! you have a fucking razor. 50. It goes, I have dropped 200 points on credit score. I can now no longer get a high street mortgage. <laughs> this woman, woman, woman seems to help me out. Aye, mate, I feel like green. I feel like green because you're fucking hard got scared. Right. So, so this is my, this is, this is, so here's some advice for young people, right? <laughs> you're handing out advice to young people. Right. Just saying, and we tell my son to listen to this one, he's 18. <laughs> just don't be tempted, but buy now, buy later, right? It's very, it is a very, very nice offer at the time. <laughs> But you will forget it and it will bite you in the ass. I'm going to suffer now for two years because of a razor, which I obviously don't fucking use. Look at the state of me. Right? I don't even use it. I use a bank. Do you know what I mean? I use a bank. Great, great. I'm trying to get my head around this. You go into Argos, there's a razor that you buy mm-hmm. that you have to pay £18. Because I went for the full, I went for the full bifter. I want, what I do is when I buy things, I make sure I get the, do you know what I mean? Uh, like, you know, if it's... The add-ons. Uh, no, in terms of, right, see if I'm going to buy a razor, uh-huh. I'm going to type in Top Razors 2019. <laughs> do you still do that? I do that. Right, I've written a day, you know. Like right, I need, a, what's, what's like I need a Hoover. I need a Hoover. My Hoover's fucked in, right? right? Right now, I'm typing in top five Hoovers 2019. <laughs> I want the bad boy. I want the bad boy. Right, That's so, what I so did. You, so you so I found the, the bad boy in Argos for the razor. For the razor. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Buy now, pay, pay later. Oh, no, but for, for for you having to pay just eighteen pounds on your first payment nine months after you've purchased that, Aye. it tells me that the razor wasn't that expensive to begin with. So why did you not just pay for the bloody razor there and then at that point? Because of my chip. I can understand doing a deal like that if you're getting a brand new flat screen telly for two and a half grand or something. Or if you're buying something like a PlayStation 4, get now, pay later. But a razor. The, the first pay right, let's go on. No, but, no, no, no Mac free. But you're not paying like £150, £200 first pay. You, it's £18, Grado. I know, mate. No, 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 no. It was the razor was two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. Right. <laughs> the number one razor. <laughs> <laughs> and I've used that about two times. Honestly, it's a, it's a I've used it about oh my word. Um but um there was also something else I wanted to just in part of this rant. Um guys, students, if you're getting your results in this week and they've not been good, your hires, mm-hmm. whatever, A-levels, whatever yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it. You know, uh, you're laughing at. Sorry. 
No, no, no. It's just because just just because you know what I d- standard grades I done well, but I made an ass of my hires, right? Uh huh. Um, you know, I actually cheated my hires. Can I get in trouble for this? No, 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 no because well, because I, I done a, 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 a go a B, have, have I got a B in music, right? I, I got a B in music, right? I had to play three instruments, right? The guitar, the glockenspiel, and I sang, right? <laughs> Now, I cannot play one chord in a guitar, but what we did was two of my best mates were guitar experts, right? Uh-huh. So when we went away to practice the guitar, guitar for the year, I would sit and just chat with them and talk shite while they learned the guitar. See, when it came to the exam, the examiner was sat behind the piano and played the piano. And when it was my turn to strum in my exam, my two mates behind me. Played for you <laughs> for me, and the fucking examiner examiner thought it was me. And I got a B for it, right? I done well. I done well. I done well on the glockenspiel because that was. Do, 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 do. Everyone's a fruit and nutcake, right? But what I'm really good at is I nailed the singing, right? Uh-huh. I, had to, I had to sing sing seven songs for my exam. Uh, I'll get some of the songs. What I had, one of the songs that I sang was "Lifted, Lifted, Lifted," so we could be lifted up today, lifted all the way. Yeah, yeah. I kind of took the piss with it, right? But I'm actually not that bad. Can you hear me? Lifted, oh baby, lifted, lifted. That was one of the songs. Another one was Monday, Monday. So good to me, it was all I hoped it would be. Sorry, I know you want me to move on, but I just want to tell you another song I sang as well. Which, but if if you take the piss out of these things, if you just go for it, and if you're no fear to take the piss out yourself, uh-huh. you can go places, right? right? Uh-huh. And that's why, as one of my songs, I sung a song for Miss Saigon. <laughs> <clears throat> why does Saigon never sleep at night? Why does this girl smell of orange trees? Vietnam, you don't give answers, do you, friend? And questions that won't ever end. Why, God? See, that's me taking the pass. And you got a B. Got a B. <laughs> and what's the advice? Oh, fuck, I can't remember. <laughs>Fantastic mystery guest playing Who Are You? Brilliant. And I know that you know this person, right. Grado. You know, I'm already getting a wee bit pissed after doing this every week, but I'll look forward to it today. <laughs> <laughs> it's good you're crap at it. That's no. And the show is sponsored, let's not forget, by Glasgow Private Hire. Uh, without Glasgow Private Hire, there is no football daft podcast. So, you no. guys who listen to the show, who enjoy the show, love the show, love the band, if you want the show to continue, then Please, please, Aye. please download the uh, the Glasgow Private Hire app on um, on the App Store and on Google Play. And if you ever need a taxi in Glasgow or the West, it's the only taxi company you should be using. What's the number, Grado? Well, that number is 0141-774-3000. And I just want to rethink with an eight, whatever you was saying there. It's great getting these tweets. It's brilliant to hear the feedback. We get messages every day. Mm-hmm. And it does, it, it makes you... Uh, uh, appreciate. Uh, we appreciate it. Yeah. Um, but... To keep us going, man, get torn into these downloads. Get download that uh, app. Keep doing in your radio voice. Guys, if you're looking for a taxi, you can call it. It's so easy. 0141-774-3000. And that's Glasgow Private Hire, guys. And you can download that app anywhere. We can get it from the App Store. If you've got an Android, we got you back. It's on the Google Play, and it's easy to download. So do it now. Get it on your phone. And don't miss it out. Listen, my father was a taxi driver, and I. (laughs) 
It's the Football Daft Podcast with Ewan and Grado and it's now time to look back at the weekend's action, the first round of fixtures in the Premiership and the Champions kicked off in spectacular style and I know you don't want me <laughs> to be ranting and raving about how Celtic played and how great they were but 7-0 against no, St Johnston, it doesn't matter. it's a great result, a great performance and yet, and it's true what people have been saying, St Johnston have been playing poorly. They've been pumped out of the League Cup. They've not been playing well. There's problems at McDermott Park, but still, you've got to play who's in front of you. And Celtic were winning seven, going on ten. Aye, that's a bold statement for Celtic. Don't get me wrong. Uh, was it Christie get the hat trick? Ryan Christie hat trick. Lee Griffiths. It must for a Celtic fan. It must feel like a, a new signing for yeah, them. Yeah. And by the way, it is great to see. And I'm a Rangers fan, but. For somebody that suffered the problems that he suffered yeah. in the last year, it's good to see Lee Griffiths back on and the park. And a smile on his face, scoring goals. And putting a smile on your face because yeah. none of that shite if he plays for Rangers and Celtic, when it comes to stuff like that, yeah. that, doesn't it, that goes out the, the, the window for we me. We all support him. We're we all, all backing him. Yeah. Um, but that's, that, I mean... Uh, did it scare you, that did result? Did it scare you? Well, it wasn't the result, mate. What scared me was my fucking phone going, beep, 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 beep. All my mates, all my Celtic supporting mates going, that's 2-0, 3-0, 4-0. <laughs> As I say, I always say at the start of these um, campaigns, like, well, making predictions, you just don't know, man. No, these pre- Because what I'm going to say is, I know we're going to jump to the, the, the Kelly and Rangers game. If I want to get started on it, uh, Kelly and Rangers. Now, that last minute goal for Goldson, I mean, I thought the my next door neighbour was going to phone the police <laughs> out the way I was jumping about. That was just superb. We, we played all right in the first half, second half, we were absolutely rotten. Um, but, f- but do you know what? Here, here's my theory on the, the reaction mm-hmm. is that that was relief because, see, last season we you, were, you, you were winning games and then you get to the last 10 minutes of a game and then somebody would equalise or they'd beat you and, and you would lose the points. Aye. So that was like a carbon copy of what you expected to happen. Mm-hmm. And then out of the blue, Golton pops up, scores that header, and there you go. You've turned a wee corner. You've not dropped the points that you'd have dropped last yep. season. It's a boost psychologically. Do you think it's a, uh, it's a massive boost, Ewan? Um, but, you know, what you've got to say is as well, there's some of these players that played in the game in pre-season that looked good against the Premiership sides, sorry, the English Premier League sides, they're having a kick about it and they look mm-hmm. good. But I'm telling you, when it, it, it makes a big difference as soon as you cross that line on that dug shit pitch. <laughs> on a, on, a, on that, well, come on, let's be it's honest, it looks pitch. worse. And the way that, I don't even know if that was legal, the way they're, f- sorry, Kelly fans, just, <laughs> the way they stretched, that, come on, the way aye, they aye. It, yeah. And, yeah. And, and what I will say is, you know, uh, there's a big difference in some of these players who maybe strolled pre-season, they're getting a big wake-up call because this game is physical, especially when Kelly played, even at 1-0, getting beat 1-0, they're still playing 10 men behind the ball. Aye, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, so I it's, mean. it's hard for them. Yeah. I was surprised, sorry to keep going on, but I was surprised that Gerard never went for Stuart and Jones earlier just to kind of just because I know they're, they're used to that pitch, yeah. they're used to the physical, but we managed to get there and that's something we're not used to doing. And I think that's the difference between last year and this year, so... So it might be the start of things to come? Aye. Okay. Aberdeen 3, Hearts 2! Let's, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's just ignore that game. I mean, I, 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 okay, let me just, let me just say, right, and it's, it's, it's been well documented on the show, I'm not a fan of Craig Levine. And when we went 1-0 down early on in the game, I thought, oh, we're going to get pumped here 3 or 4-0. And then when uh, we get to 2-1, when, when we go 2-1 up, I'm thinking, oh, wow, 14 minutes to go 2-1 up. I may have to go into this podcast and apologise to Craig Levine. He's actually got it right away at Aberdeen, a difficult venue to go to. Um, and then um, the young lad, Hickey, gets himself... Sent off. Yeah, he gets sent off. And before you know it, you're 3-2 down in the space of nine minutes and Aberdeen going to win the game. It was it was gutting. I've got to be honest, I was absolutely gutted with that result because when you're 2-1 up, you're expected at least to get something out of the game. If you're not going to win it, at least get a point and take it down the road with you. To lose it, I was gutted. That's and, a bit in the pause. Yeah, so we, so we move on now. Uh, the but, game of the week, Livingston nil, Motherwell nil. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to say about it? Uh, <laughs> Again, Unfortunately, on a I missed patch, it. But again, on a I shit know, patch. Man. You know what? There should not be those... Those AstroTurf nah. pitches in the top flight of but Scottish football. By the football. way, you, I, I, do you know what? I done a kind of Q and A thing in Kilmarnock last year, and they'll have Kelly fans that will tell you that oh, there's nothing wrong with these pitches, and these pitches are great, they're and they're terrible. saving so much what? money. What? I don't care, man. Terrible. It's just it's absolutely shocking. Can I also make a, a statement as well? Watching Sky yesterday, right? Can I also just say 
Gerard had a point a couple of months ago in an interview. The, 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 the teams need to speak with these TV companies and decide where they're going to put punters. Because I can bet you money that there would have been English football fans saying, oh, I wonder how Gerard's getting on up at Rangers. It's the first game of the season. And they show that angle. Yeah, where there's nobody in the stand. I mean, know that there's nobody, that's a bit unfair, but pack them on one stand so we can get it. Because get the atmosphere. Th- Markability wise, it yeah. looks shit. Yeah, I agree. You know, we look like League One, England. It's just, I mean, League One, some League One stadiums look, look better. They need to work together and work out where these fans are sat and to make it look good. Yeah. Um, Hibs won St. Mirren nil. Late, late goal from former Celtic player Scott Allen. Won the game for Hibs in the 85th minute. I think they're going to have a good season, Hibs. I think they're going to have a good season, and I think Scott Allen is going to have a good season as well. He's been held back at Celtic for the last couple of years. Yeah. He's got a point to prove. I think that he is going to be a star player this year. I think if he he turns on for Hibs, it's good news for Scotland as well, because we need someone of his Mm -hmm. ability and creativity in the middle of the park. And uh, Ross County, newly promoted, 3-0 3-0 winners That's against Hamilton great result, and I said a couple of weeks ago I've got a feeling this is Hamilton's mm-hmm. year they're going to they're, they're going to bite the bullet they're going to go down this year yep um, Brian Rice has got a bit of a tough situation yeah. on his horn um, so Ross County free Hamilton now as a, a good result for Ross County so what, what's the result of the weekend for you what's uh, the game that stood out what's the result well I mean without, I mean Rangers fan 2-1's a great result but the champions winning 7-0 at home. Are you saying that Celtic winning was the result of the weekend? In terms of... I'm, well, well, I'm well, asking well, you, the well, result of the weekend. No, no, listen, listen, listen. Do you know what? It needs to be... I'm always going to be honest on this. 7-0, it was against St. Johnson, but also remember, we've no won at Rugby Park League. We've no won a, a Rugby Park League game for I don't know how many years. Yeah. So it's tied in my eyes. Right, okay. It's tied in my eyes. Oh! The loving mother will one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Football Daft Podcast with Ewan and Grado, episode 11, and we're delighted to have in the studio with us today a man who's well known to Scottish football for upsetting both sides of the old firm quite regularly. <laughs> you think I'm bad? He's one of the worst. <laughs> I'm inoffensive and user friendly. <laughs> is that what you'd say? Is that, is that what would be in your byline? David Tanner, user-friendly. And you can take him home to your mother. (laughs) As long as your father is not in. (laughs) Uh, Hello, David Tanner. You and it's good to see you. It's good to see you. We've we've known each other for a very long time. We've worked in football for a very long time. Um, It's the first time we've actually been across the desk, though. Mm-hmm. I've never done this before. There was a couple of times I wanted to get you on my former football show at Real Radio, but you are busy doing other things. But here you are. I've finally got David Tanner in the seat. Not busy. Clearly. <laughs> Not busy. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. You're much better looking in real life. <laughs> Thanks, David. See when it comes to Grado. I may have made that up. <laughs> Grado. See when it comes to Grado. Yeah. Do you know him? Yes, I do. I do. Does I get he know you? text messages from him quite often. All oh, right, so you, you have a, a relationship. Yeah. So you've got a voice I think is quite easily recognisable. So my worry is here is he's going to click who you are very quickly. Right. And, 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 I, and that'll just give up the game too soon. We want to have a bit of fun with Grado. So, so we to do an impersonation. You could do a voice. I mean, with Simon Weir in last week from Trainspot 2. I heard that. And Simon Weir put on a, a voice. I'm not asking you to go to those lengths and those extremes, but if you could sort of like take it to another level, another tone within your delivery. Mm-hmm. I'm a man of many voices, but all of them the same. <laughs> this could be a problem. <laughs> On the subject of last week, by the way, your producer phoned up and said, look, can you come and do this? I worked with your sister in radio many years ago, blah, blah, blah. I'm very comfortable. He said, so I'll send you last week's, and I hard heard a bit of it. And he said, it's quite, you can be quite relaxed about it. I put it on, and there's a man talking about shaving his testicles with a credit card. (laughs) There's another man... Who tells a story about doing a crap and then fishing it out with an Asda bag and then forgetting about it and leaving it and being jailed because of it, Jose Kitongo. Uh, and then there's a man on discussing how he was, uh, well, let's say, assaulted with a double ender. So, 
<laughs> Talk me through how that is quite a nice program and why I should feel relaxed. Are you worried now? No, I'm all right. I'm You're all right. All right. I've, done, listen, I've done all those things myself. Yeah, I, I know. I just wouldn't admit to it. Yeah, but, but this is the type of show. Talk about these things, mate. <laughs> As you, as you clearly learned last week, so um, you're you're in good company here, mate. Yeah. And as you can like-minded adults. as you can tell, I mean, you're you're your former Radio Clyde, your former STV, your former Sky Sports. So now you can let your hair down, mate, because yeah. you're in a you're in a situation where anything goes. Exactly. You can talk about anything you want. I'll be truthful. Is there anything you got off your chest? You know, I'll tell you the best advice I ever had mm -hmm. working in broadcasting, and it. It was about whoa, 30 years ago. I was working at Radio Clyde. Mm -hmm. I produced a football program on a Saturday afternoon. Super score boring, as we called it. Yeah. And I got a call from Glasgow City Council. And the PI guy said, look, we've got a celebrity coming up to do the Glasgow Marathon, which was a mass. I think at the time it was the third biggest marathon mm -hmm. in the world after London and New York. So he said, we want to encourage punters to come along to the finish line so it looks good on the telly because STV used to film it in those days. So, no problem. Um, he said, right, come along and do the interview at 3 o'clock on Saturday at the Hilton in Glasgow. I said, oh, no, no, 3 o'clock in Glasgow is football time. So I said, tell you what, why don't we get this celebrity marathon runner to come on the phone? On the show? 5 o'clock yeah. on the open line. Mm -hmm. Let, put him through to Jerry McNee and Archie McPherson and all these guys at the time. Right, that's what we'll do. So at 5 o'clock... Saturday night, the phone flashes, you'll know it well, the yellow bulb yeah. flashed away, picked it up, and it's another PR guy from Glasgow Council, and he said, I've got your man here. So I, he puts him on to me, and I said, hello, I'm David Tanner, producer, I'll put you through to Archie first and the presenter in a minute. I said, well, I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll, we'll just pretend that you have called up the programme. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll see you're calling in from Anderston, where the Hilton is, and he said, no, <clears throat> not doing that at all. Not doing that at all, because that would be a lie. Yeah. Because a PR guy phoned in and yeah. probably spoke to another PR guy to set it up. Yeah. He said, listen, you sound like a young man. I said, I am. I'll give you some good advice, young man. Don't ever lie to your audience. And I've always, you know, I've never gotten to bother by, you know, maybe the occasional bit of bull. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've polished the turd. My father called me the <laughs> turd polisher when I was selling all these duff Scottish games. They weren't all duff, but some of them were. He did so, a good job of selling those duff Scottish <coughs> games. Yeah, yeah, well, listen, I was genuinely enthusiastic. No, and, you weren't, no. Uh, great acting performance. <laughs> Don't know why you didn't win a BAFTA. <laughs> What's a great game tonight? Hamilton versus St. Mirren with yeah. nothing to fucking play for. Yeah, oh, listen, I remember doing Elgin against Rangers thinking this is, this is the one. <laughs> anyway, so I put this guy through. Um, and he said, look, don't lie to the audience. Just, just say, you know, and that's what's happened. So I said, well, okay, I'll put you through now, Mr. Savile. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> and uh, ab that's absolutely true. He seems like a nice, truthful man. <laughs> Nothing hiding away in the closet there. My I, what? I, I did not see that coming. Mm. I, I was expecting like an Alan Wells or somebody <clears throat> of that ilk to be coming on. Yeah. Wow. Right. Okay. Yeah. Gee, well, the, 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 in that case. And then, on that bombshell, I'm off. <laughs> no, you're not because Grado needs to identify who you are. So what's going to happen here, David, is, as you well know, Grado will be sat next to you. He'll be blindfolded. He's going to touch you. He's going to smell you. <laughs> To, to, to see if you're a man or a woman. Once he's determined that, he's going to How does he identify, or how does he determine, uh, you know, is, it, is there a gender test here? No, it's just he touches you and he smells you. No, he, he, he rubs you. He, <laughs> oh, likes, right. he likes to rub pe our guests. Well, fortunately, I'm still oiled up from last <laughs> night. And I can see you've got some nice manicured fingernails and smooth-looking hands. I'm guessing you'll think you're a woman because <laughs> I gave you a hug earlier and you smell like a woman, so <laughs> don't be surprised if you think you're a woman. Tom Ford, darling. <laughs> So um, he's going to come in here. Are okay. you ready to do this? Yeah, I'm ready to do this. I'm right. ready to be felt up <laughs> by a wrestler from the tap end of Stevenson. Put on a voice because I think you'll recognise who you are. Okay. Well, let's do it. So it's now time to play Who Are You with our mystery guest that everyone listening knows who it is. Only Grado doesn't have a clue. He's sat here blindfolded. And first things first, Grado, as we always do with our mystery guest, you have to give the mystery guest a smell. Tell me what they smell like and whether you think it's a man or a woman. Right. Holy fuck. Smell. Smells like a man. 
Smells like a man. Smells like a man. Oh. Feel like a man. Hairy arms. Hairy arms. Uh, That's I, not my arm. Uh, say that again. That's not my arm. Well, that's not the way he talks. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have here? We've got a touch of the hand. You see, oh, soft. Oh, very soft. Mm-hmm. Looks after himself. Uh, what do you think? I think so you can feel his hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, ah, you've got a good set of hair on you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't go to the gym that much. <laughs> Yeah, I could, I could feel him go out there with, 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 with Not happy with you. He's going to slap me. But he, uh, he does go to the gym. Or do you? Ah, he goes to, did you not think he feels like he goes to the gym? <laughs> well, see, the thing is, see, the last couple of episodes, I felt folks' arms and went, all right, so he's just touched my double chin. <laughs> is he just having a go, right? What's wrong with the double chin? You got, a wee prop, you got a bit of a problem with that. So you think it's a man? I think it's a man. Right, you're right. It is, you're correct. It is a man. What age would you like to say the man is? 47. 47? Yep. You're joking! Is he? Are you, are you 47? Are you serious? <laughs> Honestly, 47? You're He's 47! He's actually 47! <laughs> That's brilliant! Right, uh, right, how many 40? That's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> 47. 47. Uh, oh, he's tapping me on uh-huh. my left uh, leg. So I can now ask him any question right. you like. Uh, which profession are you in? Uh, journalism. Journalism. Uh, right. Are you lying? I tell the truth. <laughs> um, do you write for the papers? No. Right. Do you rest? Do you do you wrestle in journalism? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it is it entertainment wise? No. Uh, well, like, it well, could be. What about murders and all that? M- what? what, what? <laughs> well, murderlistic journalists. Murderlistic. Or journalistic murder. I don't know. Folk are right about crime. <laughs> A crime. Murder police, maybe. <laughs> oh, he was in Tiger. <laughs> Were you in Tiger? No. <laughs> what did you get from being a journalist to Tiger? Just because it's murder police. I mean, that's not the phrase, isn't it? It's just been a murder. Murder police. Uh, let's see. So, journalist. So, so, you're definitely a journalist. You don't write about sports. You don't write about crime. Do you write about crime? Nope. Do you, do you write about sports? Mm hmm. Uh, football. Mm hmm. Football journalism, mm-hmm. polo shirt, football journalism. 47. 47. You for the BBC? Erotic. <laughs> now, stop, come on. How can it be erotic? There's nothing, there's definitely nothing erotic about a blind folded man <laughs> feeling up another man and feeling their arms and talking about the thing where there's nothing erotic about that. I work in the media. <laughs> it is. Are you a pres- Oh, hold on. Are you a presenter? Mm hmm. Are you. What do you call him? <laughs> Martin Geisler. <laughs> Nah. Would you like me to be? No. Uh, it's not Martin Geisler. Not Martin. Am I go- along those lines? You're, you're getting there. You're, Seriously? You're getting, I'm getting warmer. There. You're getting warmer. Uh, Jenny McNee. Jenny McNee, no. no. <laughs> Again, it's warm. You're close. <laughs> Seriously? This person worked with Jenny McNee. Oh, my God. Mm. This person worked with Jenny McNee for a number of years. Mm-hmm. Angus Deaton. <laughs> no, 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 Angus Deaton. Angus. Angus Simpson. Aye. He's 62. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is quite good. I like this game, by the way. Right. Uh, you're getting close, though. Jenny McNee. So you're, you're very cold with Angus. Are you from Ayrshire? No. No, 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 no. Where are you from? You can answer this. Originally Guruk. Guruk? Uh, then uh, Guruk. Guruk. I didn't, I didn't realize then you. Where Bishop, are you living now? Then Bishop Briggs. Where are you living now? Then Glasgow, now Edinburgh. <laughs> so you went the from... The your tea. So you went Here, from Guruk to Glasgow to Edinburgh, and you're mm-hmm. living in Edinburgh now. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. Well, I know him. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You're a... Mm-hmm. You're a... You're a one in the country goes to the games and they go, it's 2 0 here at Fur Park. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of these people mm-hmm. that, that does the BBC and, and you know, it's one of the ones that are how we're not watching it. And it's a goal! It's on the ball! <laughs> and, and you pipe in and tell us that, I don't know, fucking somebody's missed a penalty or. <laughs> That's what you do in it, that is your job. So, yeah. so, so, Grado, you're very, very warm now. I mean, you're uh, so you hot. Crocker, 150 years of historical rivalry. Close. About to be packed into the next 90 manic minutes. <laughs> it's Derby Day in Glasgow. 
<laughs> Sorry, I always just like to get my, my ink rocker <laughs> impersonation. Yeah, really good. You're getting very close. You're so close, it's unreal. Right? Oh, You're my so God. close, man. I'm going to kick myself if I don't... Oh, oh, what's this? You're rubbing you. Right, eh. Uh, and oh. I'll tell you another thing, Grado. Yes. Is his name... I know there's a commentator called Paul. Is he called Paul something? Paul Mitchell. Aye. No. No, oh. okay. No. Um, you have his number in your phone. Is it David Tanner? No. Oh, fuck's sake. Correct. Is it? No, it's no. Is it David Tanner? Is it? Yeah! <laughs> I love him! Oh, yes! <laughs> I'm delighted with that! I'm delighted with that! I am absolutely delighted with that! You were very, very I close there for quite a long time. <laughs> oh, I'm actually, I mean, me and him, me and him, me and David talk, but oh, it's good to see you, mate. You too, you oh. too. You do more talking than me. <laughs> I like it. Oh, I tell you what, there's, I tell you what, I must say, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, but there, are, there they just isn't the same with you on that sky. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> fucking isn't the same. And I'm not I, joking. I get, I get the weekend off though. No, 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 no. I'm fed up with it. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, right, one football daft right now. It needs to, it's fucking Mike. Get him back presenting the telly, and it's nothing against any of the other in our presenters. This guy is the best guy at what he does. <laughs> and I don't care what you say. That's my fucking rant this week, actually. <laughs> yeah, I seen an interview a couple of months ago that you done with you done with Amoruso. You just ask all the questions that I want to ask. <laughs> You've been doing it for you, but I burn. <laughs> I've got so much love for David Tanner, honestly, I do. <laughs> I really, 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 really do. I do. You're, you're, and you know you're, what? You're actually really happy you see I, I, Mate, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. See, actually, one, I got a wee shout out to my mate Craig Mulligan. I says to, me, I says to him a couple months ago, I said, I'd love to have to fit my podcast. Think of ideas that we could have as our guests. And do you know what he said? He said, why don't you get David Tanner? And I went, that would be a great guest. David Tanner would be a great guest to find out. Stuff, shit, shit that's happened in that wee box. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that you set up. That must be, st you must have some stories. Nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they are a grotty, to be honest with you. But I remember one of my last ones, uh, I, I, just about a minute to on air. I suddenly thought, Christ, I'm really, really hungry. I did nothing since breakfast. And I bit into this salad roll. And there was a tiny little tomato in it. And it went... <laughs> And Gordon Smith was sitting next to me, uh, and it went <laughs> under his top, from shirt. the top of his tie to the bottom of his tie. So that's and how you lose your job. <laughs> <laughs> and Smudger, God love him. I mean, he, he does take care of himself, and he likes yeah. to oh, he was raging. He was absolutely was raging. Oh, I like Gordon Smith because Gordon Smith is from the bottom end. He's, he's a bottom ender. He's a bottom ender. Is that good or bad if you're a bottom ender? Oh, no, he's a Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I've been desperate to ask you this. Mm -hmm. Is there a middle end? There is a middle end, aye. There that no, is, aye. No man's land. Yeah, is, there, is, there is a middle end. We call it that. It's actually called the Riggs, but we all call it the middle end. And I tell you what. It's just great to see David Tanner. <laughs> it is. It's just it great is. to have him honestly, here. Honestly, honestly. I see myself most days, but I still enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest. So, so I've got something in common with you. There's What's another that? connection. You can see my old house in the opening titles to Two Doors, Two Doors Down. Down. Is that... Where is it? Is that Bishop Briggs? Yeah. Ah, it is. Yeah. The, opening, the home of Wimpy. <laughs> the home of Wimpy. That's where they started. And that, you can see your, your history. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, you right? can see it, yeah, yeah. You can see the old school, Meadowburn School. That's bright. We should put that in the two doors down IMDB page, you know, the trivia. <laughs> but you can see David Tanner's <laughs> household from the... Oh, that's fucking great, but... Um, there's, a, there's a park at the back of the house where we all learn to play football. Dug shit park, it's called. <laughs> I'll let you work out why. <laughs> I used to get around to the screw-ins as well. That's not always where mouldies now. <laughs> David, you, you, you've worked in football for a number of years, and there's one thing that I don't know about you, and you said before Grado walked in here, that the best bit of advice that you were ever given was not to tell a lie. And yeah. was to always tell the truth. Yeah, but you can also evade particular questions as well. <laughs> well where do you think I'm going? You know where he's I going. know exactly where you're going. Because I genuinely, I've known you for a number of years. I don't, yeah. I don't know who you support. Listen, I, I, my I, view. Do you on know? It, my view on it is. No, no. But see before you answer. Do you know who David Tanner supports, Grado? Oh, do you? Me and David have conversations, and that, and I struggle. 
to nail to, him down. To, to nail it, aye. I, I, um, there's, it's no uh, a, a straight answer for you in it. No, it's no an easy answer. Personally, I don't think he, it is. He knows. My but view on it was, when I started working in radio as a 16-year-old, I was still at school, that you left your scarf at the door that day, and that was that. Because I, I can't stand when you hear football commentators say, oh, I'm a Tottenham fan or a... Mm -hmm. You know, because for me, it's, you're not a fan, you're a professional. Yeah. And, you know, I like to be able to walk into any ground in the country and be accepted as being straight mm -hmm. and not having mm -hmm. an angle. And I think there are too many who've, who've got an angle. Now, you're in the entertainment business. I think it's great that you can come out and say you support a team mm -hmm. and your enthusiasm comes across. But for me, I like to be able to look the guys in the eyes and them to know but then, I would but, be but, straight. But, but and he, people ask me, what, you know, guys I've known for 30 years, footballers, and, what team do you support? And I say, I, I did, but I don't. Right. And uh, I've always... But I am slightly biased in that people I like, I hope they do well. But you can mm -hmm. watch, you know, an Edinburgh Derby or an Old Firm game um, or a Renfrewshire Derby and you can think, you know, I like guys in that team and there's guys in that team I like. And there's also guys in that team I don't like. Aye. Yeah. Aye. So, 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 but do you have a team that nobody knows? I had a team. You had yeah, a team growing I had up. A team. Right. Yeah. I think I just think I think David's a good professional. And no, I, 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 no, no, and no, that's no. why I love Scotland games, by the way, because I really can get into Then you yes, can get torn. Yes, then yeah. you can what do you think about But then your love for Rangers can come out through Scotland. <laughs> 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 All that pent up Is he not a closet blue nose, by the way? No, I'm no. So you're not going to reveal to us what team you support? Ted. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I'm, I'm now going to ask you is obviously you worked at Sky Sports for a number of years you had yeah. a number of pundits uh, uh -huh. that sat alongside you the best and worst pundit you ever worked oh, with you know Gordon Strachan fantastic I love Gordon this is Strachan total entertainment love oh. Gordon for me he's one of the best pundits out there and he knows what he's talking about and he does but the thing with Gordon Strachan that used to piss me off and I used to face Gordon Strachan a Red lot hair. No, not that. <laughs> the thing that pissed me off about Gordon Strachan was that when I would sit in front of him on so many occasions when I was doing the football phone and I'd go to Parkhead on a Friday morning. Can I interrupt you a second? Yeah. Gordon loved me and he was a great judge of character. Carry on, you. <laughs> 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 um, I know where, that's I know where this is going. <laughs> He hates he hate speaking to people right. that didn't play the game. I, I think he, he genuinely, he, I mean, genuinely. You no, had no, to know how to play him. You had to, you're right. I had and a I, disaster with him one time. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. um, and I had another horror show in Dortmund, quite, I mean, not that long ago, actually, where he just wasn't, he wasn't having it. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, you but know, you, did so you know, he was unpredictable, I, I, and that I, makes him interesting. I, I well. thought he, I thought it was a bit of snobbery about, about Gordon Strachan, especially his media he had, conferences. Had to get to know him, though. Yeah, no, there was there was an incident that happened between me and Gordon Strachan at the unveiling of Roy Keane uh, when he turned up at Celtic Park, oh, yeah. and I put him on the spot because I'd heard that he'd been down to London. And he said to Roy Keane to his face in the hotel, "I don't want you. We don't need you." But this is a club decision. And I'd been talking about that on the football phone in. And um, I remember walking at Celtic Park and Ian Jameson pulling me aside. The PR guy said, we know what you're talking about. Don't even think about going there in this press conference, the unveiling of Roy Keane. Well, the last thing you do is tell me what I can and can't do at <laughs> yeah, a yeah, media yeah. conference. So I did in front yeah, of the world's like media. In front of the world's media, I, I said to Gordon, I know that you don't want Roy Keane. And Roy Keane sat next to him. And uh, Peter Lawwell jumped in and I said, sorry, Peter. No disrespect to you, but I spoke to him. I asked the manager, not you. Gordon Strachan clearly had to say, a oh, great player. Why would you want a player like Roy Keane and the stature of Roy Keane, Man United captain, be great to run the dressing room, all that bullshit. A couple of years ago, I was at Wet, Wet, Wet at the Hydro, right? And Gordon Strachan. <laughs> <laughs> and, Gor and Gordon Strachan was there with his wife. And do you know they apologised to me for that? There you go. Yeah. Because it was true. He didn't want him or didn't need him. Yeah. And even Roy Keane had written about it in his autobiography that he uh -huh. signed for Celtic to spite Gordon Strachan. Uh -huh. um, so and he apologised to me, but he's got to play the game. He has to play the game. So <clears throat> I've got a lot of time for Gordon Strachan. A lot of, a, I've got a lot of respect for him, particularly if he apologised. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. See, and by, by the way, that, that particular day... Were you we there that the, day? We did that press conference live and I had to ask the first That's half right, yeah. dozen questions. Why did you leave it to me to ask that one? I didn't know about that. <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't know about that. And 
I had to ask for, and I remember Roy Keane's eyes. Aye. They were just, I mean, they went right through you. And, and I remember being in the, the tunnel at Ibrox when Rangers had played Man United. And I said, hello, as he walked by. And it's not that he walked past me, he walked through me. Aye. <laughs> You know, it was just an you know, Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, that you felt this guy looks a bit bonkers, I'll say. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I asked the three or four questions. Oh, isn't it lovely? It's, no yeah. boyhood ambition, you know, all this other nice stuff. Yeah. Can I ask you about your relationship with Sir Alex Ferguson? And you know, they talk about people's eyes glazing over. Mm -hmm. the, his eyes look just, it was almost like they went red. And uh, that was a terrifying one. Roy so, Keane. Yeah, it was, it was just a strange one. Because when you're doing it live, if it goes Pete Tong, it goes Pete Tong, and you know it's going to be in the papers. Yeah. And if, I'll tell you, Strachan had a, when Strachan was Scotland manager, I had, uh, the hardest thing I ever used to do was the Scottish Cup draw. <laughs> and the Scottish Cup draw was always a bit of a kind of, it was always a bit kind of... It's unpredictable, isn't it? Yeah, and even the technical side of it, yeah. it, it was always a wee bit scary. And uh, you had no monitor, and it was you never quite knew what, what could happen. Anyway, we did the Scottish Cup draw, and I've watched the tape back. When they, when they start the draw, one of the balls had come unscrewed. Aye. And the one that had come out, the, the, the team name, was visible at the start. So mm -hmm. no bugger noticed it. And this particular one has been directed in London as well. So yeah. it was... The time they were seeing what had happened, too late. It was nine seconds old. Yeah. So um, all hell broke loose. And what was the team? Uh, Rangers probably. I can't Celtic. remember. It was, it was a well, the, whichever one was a hot ball. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, by, and by the way, I've done a hundred of these Scottish Cup draws. There's no pockling. There's no hot balls. There's no red balls. Right. You know, but it's become truth over the years and I've got no reason to lie to you about that so uh, anyway um, it all went bloody wrong I had no idea what was happening I couldn't see um, um, but I, I knew that I, I had to smile sweetly and hand back to the studio because I was the only one in the room who knew that if, if it goes wrong it's void and you have to finish it and, and restart and I wasn't even off the air I could feel my phone vibrating and I picked it out and it said Strachan Gordon and I opened it up and it just said from Gordon who was the manager of Scotland at the time never work in television, never work with animals, children, or the SFA. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Strachan. Well yes. done. Yes. Well done, you know. <laughs> and I couldn't tell anyone about it at the time. I just thought, that is an absolute... That's brilliant. And by the way, he was true. banging on him. He was <laughs> so <laughs> true. In, in the instance of the draw, anyway, you know. No, I do like Gordon Strachan. He, he, I, listen, honestly, I wish we... I, I want to speak to David all day, because I, I honestly believe he must have loads of stuff. Has, has there uh, anything else that you can remember that's ever... Like a football player said something, or somebody's gave you into a row, or has MD yeah. really made you cry? Has <laughs> <laughs> anyone ever made you no, cry? No, seriously, but because that must. <laughs> no, because you know, because I love watching these videos, a uh, journalist, because sometimes I think, how did these folk get in? You know, because we type in um, funniest football manager reactions, and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, the one with Klopp recently. And I'm a. And I think yeah, yeah, I'm a. Got, no, the, the guy says, why, why did you know play. Uh, why did you know flying on an R striker? Why did you know play a lot more direct? He's, and Klopp was going, listen, it's no fucking FIFA. It's no, you know, you're not, you're not playing a game here. It's not as easy as just, oh, let's fling on an extra striker and we'll try and score a goal. I was um, always, I was always very careful that I, I never make statements. So I always ask questions. I hate when you hear presenters going, well, that, you know, well, you're a good first half and then the second half because you change the tactics. Yeah. And, and it's like, Fuck, do you know about it? Exactly. Yeah, or, yeah. So, I like so to you ask want questions. them to offer the information through your question? Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, so I think there's a lot of vanity mm -hmm. in that particular. So I always make sure to do that. So go on, great or something. No, like no, that. no. It's just not because I've always just been interested in that kind of. The same. You know, I, 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 I just, just the biggest telling off I ever got. Aye. I mean, I've, I had a few tongue lashings from managers over the years, but I was uh, I did an interview with Lorenzo Amoruso one night. Many, many. It's probably about. 2002 when he left Rangers mm -hmm. and he was doing the old uh, kind of um, you know, he was saying things that suggested that he, he wanted away right. and he didn't, didn't go on with Advocat um, and uh, but he, he stayed through that and then the money the money was beginning to, his next contract offer wasn't as good and at this point McLeish was in and I think he wanted away so you could sense he wanted to tell you something well I could sense that, I could sense that he didn't and I was keen to show that he didn't. 
and he right. didn't tell me a lie, but uh-huh. he was very, very abusive. So the next day, I was down in Ayrshire. That's right. Mm-hmm. And it was pishing down. Right. And we were in the, the park, public park in Ayr, where Gordon DL was putting Air United through their paces uh, at the train session. And uh, this fella came up to me. A big anorak on, zipped up to here. You just see his hooter and uh, walking his dog. And he said, uh, Are you David Turner? I said, Aye. You're a wee bit out of order last night, were you know? I said, What do you mean? Oh, well, Renzo Amoruso, the captain of Glasgow Rangers. You can't even speak to him like that. I said, Well, I think, I think you, uh, you know, the punters want to know. Does Aye. he want to stay or does he want to go? You mm-hmm. know, he's a former captain of the club. Uh, well, uh, I thought you were out of order. Um, so you should, you should be a bit more respectful, you know, big club. And I said, um, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, hi. So you Sydney Divine. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hi. <laughs> and off he went. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Sydney Divine. Div- tiny bubble, Sydney St- Divine. Uh, Sting kidney. Sting kidney. And uh, I phoned my mother <laughs> oh and my. said, Listen, um, <laughs> I said, I've just been told off by Sydney Devine. <laughs> and and what, what a rollicking my mother gave me. <laughs> you know, you brought shame in the family. <laughs> You've upset Sydney Devine. You're in tiny oh. Bobby Ells now. That's true. That is brilliant. Uh, only in Ayrshire, you know. That is brilliant. That uh, is brilliant. David Tanner, it's been an absolute pleasure, my man. It's been nice to be yeah. here. You and can I just say, I'm on a wee bit pissed off that you've got him as a who are you guest. I thought he was a good who are you guest. No, he's no, he get. Do you want me as a why are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> so good. Basically, there's a thing called in wrestling called jabronis. It means like <laughs> dafties. Uh-huh. The who are you guests are the dafties. This guy is too much, yeah. He's a mean man. Aye. So he's a mean you've guest. Him, you've, you've put a mid-carder. You've, <laughs> you've put, not in fact, you've put a main eventer in the mid-card for me, which has disappointed me. Because if, re- if I knew David was, was going to be in the studio, I'd have plenty more questions. I knew I'm having to find the cuff. No, do you know what? I'm not shaving anymore. Okay. Because I feel like Matt Lucas when I shave. <laughs> I feel as I, 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 I don't like that. So I bought a wee razor and I put on him a free. But see, there you go. He's noticing things. Look, he's immaculate. He's greatly dressed. And he's looking at me in my fucking track, needing a shave. Look and mock it. And he's picked up on it because he's a consummate professional. Yes. And that's why David Ta is a man and he should be back on our screens. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying you're known on screens. That makes. You know I know what you mean. mean. I David, do pop up every now and again, but not often I, enough for you. D- David, so um, I think you should sign off here, mate. I think right. we would like you to sign date, off. Date how you would date, right? Let's flip to the camera. Right, David, well, sign listen, off here. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Cameron, Mr. The Wrestler. Thank you very much from all of us here. It's been great having you. See you next time. If there ever is a next time, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> and at that point you say that was shite <laughs> <laughs> fucking nil nil <laughs>
Um, all you need to do is go to beer52.com forward slash daft and we can sort out eight beers if you cover just £4.95 for the postage. So basically you get eight beers for a fiver. Eight beers for a fiver and they're coming to your door. Uh, so go to beer52.com forward slash daft and we'll send you eight beers if you just cover the postage, which is four ninety five. So a fiver for eight beers and it's yours. That's, B5, that's beer52.com forward slash daft. And as an added bonus for football daft listeners, sign up within the next two weeks and get two extra free beers. So that's a total of ten free beers for a fiver postage. That is tremendous. Uh, your first box will be sent to you the next day and will contain beer from all over Europe. Oh, that's what I'm saying, because there's, there's other beers in this box. Aye. Well, they've even got a wee pack of nuts. We'd pack of nuts, oh, it's got everything. Ah, it's good. To see other what the, what, so, which country are you picking it now? Oh, it's for different, mate. Different countries? That's actually cool as fuck. This looks like a mango milkshake flavour. What? Aye, 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 aye. I want to see those different. Let's see what one's this. Sla- I don't know what one that is, but that's it's like a kind of uh, for Guinea. For Guinea? Aye, aye. Where's Guinea? Africa. Yeah, uh, well done. Spread of democracy. <laughs> this one, this one's called Gads. Gads. <laughs> 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 so um, there you go. It's a monthly subscription service for Beer Fifty Two. Don't hold you. It's a monthly subscription service for beer. Beer 52, don't hold you to ransom. You can leave at any time. So you can sign up, get the beer, and then when you have enough, you can Aye. sign out. They're not going to hold you to ransom. It's not like they scud websites when you <laughs> sign up for 4 95 <laughs> and then it charges you 4 95 the next month, then the next month, then the next month. Then you need to get into that Bank of Scotland and go, I've signed up for this scud. Can you t- fucking <laughs> stop the payments? <laughs> We've all been there. Have we? <laughs> so just go to beer52.com forward slash daft to get your first case of eight, eight beers for free. And don't forget, sign up in the next two weeks and get an extra two unmissable beers free. That's www.beer52.com forward slash daft. What are you waiting for? Go and sign up for that amazing deal and get yourself some free beer. And don't forget to get involved in the competition, which is on the Facebook page and the Twitter page. Just look for Football Daft and predict a score between Rangers and Hibs at Ibrox and you, if you get it right we'll send you a case of beer I'm going for Rangers 1 Hibs 0 Ryan Jack goal scorer I'm going for 1-1 one, one. swig a beer for the working man <laughs> <laughs> it's the Football Daft Podcast with Ewan and Grado episode 11 and we're delighted to have him via video phone from his home in Musselburgh I can't believe a man of his Age knows how to work technology, but he does. I don't know many. <laughs> I don't people. really. I don't really. My <laughs> grandsons have just showed me. <laughs> it's the one and only Billy Brown. Oh, that's that's what I'm saying. I, I thought to myself because we had a wee bit of technical issues there, uh, and I thought the last person you want to piss off <laughs> is Billy Brown. <laughs> Well, no, no, no. I'm only second to Jim Jeffries. You didn't want to piss him off. Let me tell you that. Uh, Billy, it's uh, it's good to have you on the Football Daft podcast. And, mate, you've had such a long, distinguished career in football. Do you still have as much love and passion for the game as you did back in the day? I have. I have got the, the same passion. I, I've, I've been like that since I was a wee laddie. And now I'm taking Musselboro Windsor 2010s for my nine-year-old grandson. I went along to watch as a granddad. Now I'm running the team. So <laughs> I went for the hearts to Must Have Been a Windsor 2010s. <laughs> Brilliant. And uh, are you still enjoying it, uh, Billy, as you ever have? Yeah, well, this is the hardest job I've had, actually, this one. the uh, <laughs> It was easy at Hearts and Bradford and Kilmarnock and Falkirk and that. But to uh, try to get these laddies going is uh, a wee bit different. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, I still love football. I go to Tyne Castle every other week there, watch the Hearts, and uh, yeah, I'm as keen as I ever was. And what about Jim Jeffries? You still keep in contact with Jim? You still as pal as you ever were? Yeah, we are. I was just saying, you know, we were at the, uh, Tyne Castle on, on Friday night at the, uh, Lin- the LA Phil- Philharmonic Orchestra. <laughs> the, uh, me and Jim did a, you know, a, a tune that they played, really. <laughs> You know, I think it was too modern for us. We were the sort of 60s boys. <laughs> did you go for a wee swally? Well, we did. Well, Anne and Linda Rice were with us. And right. uh, it was a sort of champagne reception. Uh, and it was it was a really good night. Did, did you really go for your dinner? Night. Did you go for your dinner, Billy? 
No, 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 I can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, especially uh, what, Edinburgh what, prices. Uh, Prawns and things like that, you know, very tasty stuff, posh stuff. Aye, that'd have been good. Billy, as you well know, I'm a hearts man. Um, I know you are, I know you are. And I've uh, I've interviewed you and uh, Jim on a number of occasions over the years. And I'm delighted now that you're no longer involved at the hearts in the sense of a a coaching capacity, that you're kind of like semi-retired, even though you're taking on the the boys team just now for your, your grandson. So I'm going to ask you straight. What was Vladimir Romanov really like to work for? Well, I, I think that Jim and I were lucky because we, we went there at the end, Kenny, he was coming to the end of his reign. Yeah. But I mean, basically, the man was a raving lunatic. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> you know, it, some of the things he did were, were, were unbelievable. But I mean, he, he did win two cups when he was in charge of the Hearts, but uh, they paid, their pri- paid the price for that. And I mean, I, I was at Kilmarnock most of the time, you know, he was at Hearts. And, and Hearts' reputation went down when Romanoff was there. I don't think it was a good time for the club. And as I say, we got him at the last stages. He had, he had sort of, he uh, wasn't so demanding when we got there, but a very, very difficult man to work for. So see, when he made the approach for you two to come back to Hearts, were you reluctant to do it, Billy, because of his reputation, because of the way that he dragged the club through the gutter? Yeah, well, I mean, we, we had just left Kilmarnock. We are only away from Kilmarnock for two, three days, and, you know, Hearts phoned... Uh, and obviously, we, we knew what we were going to take on, but we thought, well, it's the Hearts, and it's a great club, the Hearts. And we thought, well, what have we got to lose? We're, we're going to get the sack anyway, so <laughs> let's have a wee go at it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we enjoyed it to a certain extent. But we got the sack when we were third in the league and still in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> it's unreal. You know, it so shows you, done it. We finished third in the league, and we were still in Europe, uh, European competition. And Billy, but see, it, see when you get it was the, an experience. See when you got the sack when you're third in the league and you're still in Europe. What did you get sacked for? Do you remember that conversation and when that happened? Well, no, really. It, it, Roman, he didn't do it at the sale. It was his right hand man that did it. You know, just saying that uh, the type of football we were playing wasn't what the, was required. But I mean, it, it didn't really make any difference uh, because we knew that was going to happen. I mean, I, when I said we were third, it, it was the start of the following season that he sacked us. We, we, we hadn't played a league game and got the sack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we, we'd been playing a European game. I think we were in Hungary and we drew in Hungary and uh, the league campaign was about to start and they sacked us. Billy, um, I want to ask you about now, quite a lot of my material you'll be able to find on YouTube. Now, there's a certain video on YouTube right now of yourself. I, I watched it last night. I don't know if you're aware of it. I know you probably are. But it, it's one of the, the, the best videos that are online. Uh, it, it shows you how passionate you are. Mm. There's a wee bit of humour to it. But o- obviously as well, you're, you're angry. It's when you're with East Fife. Do you came a video I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I've actually... I've actually never watched it all the way through. Have you no? No, no. When my son told me it was on, uh, and it went viral. I I oh, aye. But, but it went viral, and I, I watched the first 10 seconds, and I thought, <laughs> oh, what an arsehole. <laughs> <here." laughs> the goal that we lost, the second goal, is as bad a goal as I've ever seen at this level. You know, to lose a goal like that, I mean, it was just pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. And I thought I was coming to a club that everybody was a one, but uh, I'm afraid that's not the case here. The supporters didn't want to support the team, support me, that's fine. That, that's no good, that's no good. The, the players here are what we've got. This is all we've got. This is all I tell you, I've got a great, um, you know, letters and phone calls Aye. and emails for all around Britain, for a lot of managers mm-hmm. and that. Uh, you know, but what annoyed me about it was everybody was doing their best to get East Fife off the bottom of the league because when I went there, they were bottom. You know, and, and people were criticising it and it really, really got to me, especially shouting at the players. It wasn't me that were shouting it, but it was the players. Mm-hmm. And it was so unfair and I felt an injustice. And uh, the, the, other thing about, the other thing about that that nobody's seen, when I was coming off at half-time, the, uh, there was people shouting and the woman passed by with a mic that was doing the half-time draw. And I got a grip of the mic and the, I, I said to the crowd, right, if you're not happy, come back, come and see me and I'll give you your money back. Is that what you said? Yeah, I did. Thank fuck they did, not they? You know? <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I, I, really, I really felt 
passion I've you always gotta... had a passion for the aye. game. And, 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 you know, I, I hate injustices and people slagging people that don't deserve it. And that was one of the occasions. Did it make a difference, that video? Did you did you find there was more support after that video came out? Did it make a difference to the club and the fans and how they treated the players? Well, well, uh, results shot up. Mm -hmm. and we, <laughs> well, we there you go. We, we, you were in the playoff. You got them fired uh, up. We won, we won the playoff. Uh, and there's no doubt that the, everybody got behind the club. Right. And it, it did work. I, I didn't think at the time I was doing it for it to work. But it, it did work, and 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 he's five kept in the league, which, which was the mo most important thing. Woody, what was your what was your biggest highlight of your career, Billy? You and J Jim, you's, to me, you's are the the Scottish Ant and Deck. <laughs> I believe that. Um, <laughs> I, I think he's the two. He's are a, a great team. I want to know you and Jim, which are your you, 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 you know, what's the best memory you've got? Your biggest accomplishment. <laughs> Well, there's no doubt about it. We won the cup in 1998. Yes, we, I was we, crying. I was a, I'm Rangers, a Rangers fan. We beat Rangers uh, in Glasgow. Aye. And to beat any of the old firm in Glasgow in a cup final is a major, major achievement, mm -hmm. by the way, because you're against everybody there. Luckily that day, Willie well, Young was a referee. <laughs> he, uh, he was quite a fair guy, you know. I don't think, I don't, uh, he was one of the few referees that won the Rangers <laughs> But, uh, Never a no doubt, that, that, that was our biggest achievement. The only oh, disappointment we had that season is we should have won the league that season. Yes. Well, that's you know, we, 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 were, we were the best team and we should have won the league. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a great thing to have the cup. And let me tell you, even thinking about the following day, going through the streets of Edinburgh, you know, uh, here's in the back of my neck stand up. It was right. fantastic. And, and see when it means so much to so many people. What a great satisfaction it is! Yeah, great satisfaction for Jim and I. It was great. I've got to say, see that, see that day. The the Rangers supporters were fantastic that day because they stayed in the ground. Because remember that that's the third cup final we had played Rangers in, and they were get, they had beaten us twice. And the Rangers supporters stayed in the ground and cheered us when Aye. we won the cup, which was great. And the other thing I've got to say about that is Walter Smith and Archie Knox. You know, were really class acts, and the the first two cup finals, they they, they beat us, and they brought the cup in and gave me and Jim a drink of it. And the third <laughs> one, where we beat them, they come into the dressing room to see us and congratulate us. Oh, that's nice. That's so it was cool. great. It was great. That and is they, cool. They, they were they were good people then. See, I think that you and Jim Jeffries are Hearts legends, and you'll always be um, well received and well loved by the Hearts support. But then you go and blot <laughs> blot your um, copybook, Mister Brown, by going and becoming the assistant manager at Hibs with Jimmy Co uh, with Colin Calderwood. <laughs> the fuck are you yeah. doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, unfortunately, Ewan, and you might find this out to your cost. See, when you lose a job, you've still got your wife That's that. spending heavily. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, had to, I had to go and get another job. And yeah. I, I, was only, I was only away from Hibs a week, and away from Hearts that, uh, one week, and I was in Tenerife actually on holiday, and, and they phoned me up. And uh, Hibs training ground is only about 10 minutes from my house here, and I thought, well, I know I'm going to get a bit of stick, but... Uh, <laughs> did you get a stick? Ah, of course he did. No, I did not, was uh, actually, it really bad? Actually, I didn't get, I didn't get an awful lot of stick. No, I, was I it mere for the hearts? Stick. I got more stick right. when I left Hibs and went back to hearts. I got right. more stick to the Hibs supporters when I went back to Easter Road with the hearts. Right. I got more stick then, but I, I didn't get a lot of stick when I went to the Hibs, really. Or, or I didn't hear a lot of it. I'm not <laughs> Can I ask you on, there's, there's also a video online, right? <laughs> I was pissed myself at it. It was a game a couple of years ago uh, where you and Derek McInnes were both oh, sent oh. to the stand. What were you yeah. arguing about? Oh, I'm going, I'm trying to lip read. I'm going, <laughs> he's, and I think, what do you call the assistant manager at Aberdeen? What, what do you, uh, Tony Docker. Tony Docker, yes. Tony Docker, he says something to you and he, you just fire back something yeah. and it's as if they say, you fucking get it, fucking after <laughs> this fucking game. And I'm desperate to know what that, what you were arguing about, what was said. Well, I know you probably. Well, what happened? What happened was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was 1-1 and the Hearts had a young team we were doing to 10 men we needed a victory and we got a free kick late on and I went out the dugout and I was shouting get the ball in the box get the ball in the box we put in the box and scored but by this time I'm in front of the Aberdeen dugout and Derek grabbed me he grabbed me with the lapels <laughs> and the uh, you know I thought he was going to hit me uh, but I fought him off <laughs> 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 and we both got sent up the tunnel and, and by the way, when I went up the tunnel, Derek was waiting for me, and I thought, oh, jeez, I'm going to have to fight him. But luckily, <laughs> they, 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 they locked me in the, the Hearts physio's room, 
and it was all calmed down. And, and Tony did say something as we were going up the tunnel, but I don't know what it was. But see, we, we, had a, we had a drink after that. There game. you go. Yeah, these things happen. Aye. Billy, know, Billy, Billy here's, 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 here's my next question. As a follow-up to that, do you think you'd have taken Derek if it had been a fight? I think you would have. I think you'd have battered him. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he, did he tell him that, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, 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 see, see, when, see when you're in the dugout, lads, uh, your emotions and your passion, and uh, you know, it's hard to control it. And the people that can control it, I really admire them. And I wonder, have they got enough passion? But, you know, you, you can't help yourself doing there. You just can't help it. It's, uh, if I went back tomorrow, I'd be the same. Good. Uh, and, uh, Billy, before we let you go, I need to ask you about the hearts at the moment. 3-2 uh, defeat to Aberdeen there at the weekend. Um, Craig Levine is under quite a bit of pressure. The Hearts fans are not particularly happy with the way things are going at Tynecastle just now. Great stadium, great infrastructure, debt-free. It's all looking good on paper, but on the pitch, it's not working out. Six in the league last year, not a great start to the campaign. Performances yeah. in the league. Performances yeah, in the I mean, I've seen, as I say, I, I see all the Hearts home games, and I'm, I'm going on Saturday as well. You know, last season was a pretty hard watch, to be yeah. perfectly honest with you. But this season, I think there's a team there, Ewan. They've got a team. The, the, the big problem they've got, they've got that many players, and they've got that many, they've got five centre forwards, as far as I can see, and four centre halves and three left four left backs. It's getting that team and finding their best team. And I think that if they can do that, I think they'll do pretty well. But for that to uh, for that to work, Billy, and I hate to say it, um we need a new manager. I don't think Levine is a man, I think Yeah, I'm, yeah, well I'm I'm the chairman of the managers and coaches association in Scotland and I'm 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 not gonna have a go at a manager, no. you know, but but I think that uh, I would like to see the hearts a wee bit more positive. I, th yes. I think if they were more positive, I think what, what's wrong with the supporters is the brand of football they're seeing yeah. isn't what they're wanting to see. You know, when Jim and I was at Hearts, we tried to give the supporters what they wanted and we tried to attack and we tried to win every game that we played. Mm -hmm. And, the, uh, you know, if you do that, you'll get people on your side. It's not a great watch, but... You know, let, let's see how it goes. Uh, you and you, you never know. You never know. Football's a funny game, and, and you know, it might turn for them. But they've got to play better football than what we've been playing last season. But Billy, you're the chairman of the league managers. How does that work? What, what, what happens with the with the ideas? Uh, no, very much. I didn't, uh, <laughs> the, the managers are in. The, the managers are only people in Scotland that's not got a say on what happens. But we're, we're, we're getting we're on well, a few committees in in, in Hamden now, and you know we've got to try and. Protect Take the managers. I think somebody is somebody trying to phone you, Billy. It's coming up. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll decline it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. I um, so I, I take it you you. Is that a <laughs> <laughs> He's listening in. He's listening in live. Um, I take it you think that um, a lot of managers these days are not given enough time. It well, jobs. without doubt. I mean, Aye. You know, really, see, when you take over a club, you usually take over a club because they're not doing well. They're not doing well because they've not got good players. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh, well, so for fuck's sake, Derek, leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, you need time. You need time to build your, your team in that. Aye. But uh, anyway, that, that's Aye. the prob that's probably the person that's waiting for me at five o'clock. Right, right, Derek, well, uh, sorry, Billy, Billy. One, well, one more thing before you go. Have you got a wee message for Jose Katonga because he was pissed off that he got dropped for the Scottish Cup final when he played in every other game in, the, in right. the Scottish Cup? You got a wee message for Jose Katonga? He was the luckiest boy to play in all the games up to the final. Tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> he a favour. He, uh, <laughs> no, he's a smashing me, but he was a real sunshine, Jose Katongo. Uh, it was me who went to see him and uh, we brought him to Hearts. And he did, he did great there. He, great for somebody that can't kick the ball very far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, Bill, Bill, right. Billy Brown has been Billy, fantastic. Brilliant. Take care, my man. You've been the best. Okay. All right, Billy. Cheers, Bye-bye. 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 And that's it for the Football Daft Podcast with Ewan and Grado, sponsored by Glasgow Private Hire. Again, our thanks to Glasgow Private Hire for everything that they do for the Football Daft Podcast. Our thanks to Billy and to Stevie and everyone who works at Glasgow Private Hire for supporting the, the team here at Football Daft. It's episode 11. We've enjoyed it. Thanks to Billy Brown. Billy Brown was brilliant. Well done I've, uh, for, for Billy Brown for working FaceTime. I got a couple of pictures of him. 
there just while he was on FaceTime, just by work out, look. It's funny as fuck, see if you get that. It's just, just, it's just his gonna, nose and his mouth. Show that. Giving me a giggle, we've just seen Billy Brown try to work FaceTime, but um, I thought that was a really good episode. David Tanner, you're so happy with I David know, Tanner. I know, I know, I know. So, I've, I've I wanted to get him on. We were disappointed that I never got enough enough notice. That's why I asked some questions. That's, what, that's why that's well, what who are you about? We can't tell about. you who the bloody guest is. I'm pissed off, Dan. What but who are you? <laughs> <laughs> See, next week we're getting the fans on next week. That's spelt. Well, we're know getting what? the fans on That's FaceTime. It. And right. we're going to get them to give us their opinions on the games that have just been played at the weekend. This so is that big man. The game started. This the is it. The, the, season's the, the season started. Yeah. This is what we're all about. Football daft is about to get bigger and better. Stay Aye. tuned. Tell your pals. Spread the love. Retweet. <laughs> <laughs> tell everybody. Tell, tell your friends. Season's up and running and football daft is on Facebook. Just search for us. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't miss us. You can't miss right. us. I'll tell, you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. You. You, you can't, can't miss, miss us. <laughs> uh, on Twitter, it's at Football Daft Pod. Instagram is Football Daft Podcast. YouTube, Football Daft. Um, you get the podcast on Apple, Spotify, Acast, and SoundCloud. SoundCloud, YouTube, YouTube are everywhere. Aye. Gradle, you've been daft. You've been football. It's yourself. Remember that? <laughs>